host, Ansel Insier. Welcome and welcome again. Another edition of the Hour of Politics. I want to ask you to do me that usual favor by hitting that share button for me quickly uh, because I'm ready to go into business. I don't want to waste your time. Uh, time is fast spent. We want to get into the issue. And so, folks, welcome to Focus on Liberia here on this program, The Hour of Politics, with me, Anthony Sier, your host. Welcome, welcome, and welcome. Our topic today, Finance Minister Samuel Tua is dead wrong and dangerous for Liberia. I have my reason, and I will be propounding those reasons for you. And at the end of the day, you might have the opportunity to agree with me or disagree with me. And that is the essence of this discussion. And so I want to welcome you. Don't forget to hit that share button. And we are getting started here quickly in no time. So folks, I think before we get started, I got something to play for you. And that will be the voice of Samuel Tua. And then I will be able to state my disagreement with Samuel Tua. And after that, I will tell you why Samuel Tua is dead wrong. And further on in the show, I will also be able to provide reasons why Mr. Tua is not only wrong on the issues, but he is also dangerous for our country. So folks, stay with me as I roll this clip here quickly. And you will have the opportunity to listen to Samuel Tua. And after that, I will be able to go into the issues. So hit the share button with the package here. It's Lola. I have come prepared to make it hot and to also make it politically juicier and scintillating for you. So stay there and stay with me right here at this platform focused on Liberia. Watch. We have to correct the lie. We will have to correct that lie in your community, in the street, everywhere in this country, in Grand Gina, in Nima County. The people of Liberia will have to ask those people who said 60 billion of, of was missing why they lied on the president. That question will have to be answered. As Minister of Finance, as Minister of Finance, I will write to the Speaker of the House, the President Pro Tempore, the Press Union of Liberia. I will write and demand that the opposition of this country acknowledge to the people of Liberia that no 16 billion was ever missing. They need to document and, and, and accept so that Liberian people can hear it in their body, in their language. That we are sorry for saying 16 billion were ever missing because as Foreign Minister, I know the damage it did to the country outside. I went to pay for money and senior presidents of global international organizations said, but well, how can we be giving your money for your, your, your missing 16 billion dollars, Mr. Minister? We want to help Liberia, but we are hearing that a whole routine 16 billion, how is that possible? I have to be fighting, explaining to them that it's a lie. The people are trying to destroy our government, that's why they're saying 16 billion. Don't listen to that. You will see one year later. Now some of them call me and say you were right, Mr. Minister. And so if some of the international people are saying that, our people here should come clean and say we are sorry to the Liberian people for telling them that 16 billion was missing. There will be no rest. That's a serious. So you're all standing here. I'm not going to go. All right, folks, you heard it right there for yourself. You heard it right there for yourself. That was our final minister, Mr. Samuel D. Twa, uh, trying to make the case that some people, those who told the story about the 16 billion have to apologize to the Liberian people. And uh, those people, unquote, told a lie and a lie on the president of the Republic of Liberia. That was Mr. Samuel Twa speaking there in that clip and you listening to him. And I want to say to you, I beg to disagree with Mr. Samuel Twa. 
and for many reasons. And if you stay with me, you will get what the reasons are and let's get started. And so folks, do you agree, first of all, with Mr. Samuel Twer, that some people told a lie about the 16 billion there's some people lie on the president and follow on as he continued to speak, he made it clear that the opposition are the one who told the lie. All right? Somebody was trying to call me here. He said it was the opposition that told the lie that $16 billion went missing. So I know many of you are wondering right now, where is this guy going with this? And what is actually his disagreement? And how is Mr. Samuel Twer wrong? When in fact, there was a report uh, from Crow that at no time did the $16 billion, that amount of money uh, go missing at no time, according to the report, except that some amount of money, I believe from my reading of the report, around $2 billion was unaccounted for. And so why is Ansorin saying that he disagreed with Samuel Twer? So, first of all, let's understand who broke the news about the $16 billion. Because if we can identify the person who broke the news, then we will be able to tell who actually told this story about a $16 billion getting missing? That is important for us to understand, folks. Uh, my memory here is still fresh, and I want you to understand that it was the Pirate, the Pepper newspaper, the, the newspaper owned by Philip F. Brown. Uh, I think it's the hard paper newspaper. I got that right. The hard paper newspaper that reported during that time, I believe it was in September of 2018, uh, when that news was broken by the hard paper newspaper. And even when it, at the time the hard paper newspaper broke that story, the hard paper newspaper reported $9 billion that was missing and in question at that particular time. So everybody in the country was wondering, how can this be possible? And we were all looking for answers. Mark that. Again, it was the hard paper newspaper that broke the story. It was not the opposition that broke the story. I'm not trying to defend opposition because I'm not on your side. I am in the middle. And I want you to get that. But it was the half paper newspaper that broke the story about a $9 billion being missing at that time. So when Liberians and everybody else trying to find answers, looking up to the government for answers, then our government came in through the Minister of Information, Len Eugene Nambe. And Len Luigi Nambe did not only confirm about billions of data being missing, he confirmed the information on BBC. He confirmed the news on the international cables. Not only did he confirm that billions of data were missing at the time, he was the one who said the money in question at that time was around 15.5 billion Liberian dollars. That is how the figure 16 billion dollars came into the picture. I know some of you now are trying to get the picture. So first, the para, the, the hard paper newspaper reported about Billions of Liberian dollars being missing. To be specific, they reported at that time $9 billion. So when people were trying to see if there was any truth to that story, 
and calling on the government of the Republic of Liberia to either confirm or refute that information, the spokesman for the government, Eugene Nambe, on international, international cable, confirmed that yes, money was missing, and not only that, that the money in question at that time was 15.5 billion. And it is important to state to you that is why the issue of 16 billion data came into the picture. Edward, I'm live. What is the deal? Edward, stop disturbing me, man. I'm live. I didn't say dead. He's dead wrong. Oh, I didn't see that. Oh, man. Folks, I'm sorry about that. Uh, somebody is calling me. I'm not saying he's dead. I said he's dead wrong. Uh, Edward, you need to get it correct. You know, stop uh, interrupting the broadcast here. Folks, I apologize about that. He called two times, so I just wanted to make sure that I was doing, I was not doing anything wrong. And, you know, uh, sometimes when you laugh, yes, somebody call you two times and, you know, pay attention. But uh, again, I'm sorry for the interruption. So let me continue. So, yes. Mr. Twa was or is dead wrong. The person that reported, I mean, that confirmed to the entire world that yes, the amount of $15.5 billion got missing was our Minister of Information, Len Eugene Namwe, who did confirm that yes, money in the amount of $15.5 billion went missing. That is how come the whole story of $16 billion came into the picture. And so that is where Mr. Samuel Twer, the minister, is dead wrong. He is wrong because it was not the opposition that reported that $16 billion went missing. It was the Minister of Information Cultural Affairs and Tourism, Lane Eugene Nambe, who is the official spokesman for the Liberian government, who confirmed that indeed $16 billion or about $16 billion went missing in Liberia. That is how the government believing their minister through the President Commission or acts for the International Committee to come in and help and that is how come we today have a report on $16 billion in Liberia. So Twer is wrong to, to be saying that it was the opposition that said $16 billion went missing. So Samuel Twer is wrong. It was the Liberian government that confirmed that money went missing. And in fact, that money was around $15.5 billion or $16 billion. So if Mr. Twer should have any point as to whether it is important or necessary for somebody to apologize to the Liberian people, then it should be the Liberian government to apologize to the Liberian people. Because it was the Liberian government that confirmed that yes, indeed, money went missing, and actually that money was around $15.5 billion or $16 billion, and that information was confirmed by the spokesman of the Liberian government. So Mr. Twer is wrong. That is the first wrong that Mr. Twer was able to register in, in his book. Now let me progress. Was the government, was the government, it was the government that confirmed the report about the $9 billion by saying it was $15.5 billion, which brought the story about $16 billion. So Eugene Namwe, the one who confirmed that. And not only that, another thing the government did to confirm that there was some $16 billion that are missing when the Ministry of Justice came in, the Ministry of Justice went and put moratorium on about 15 individuals in Liberia. 
that the government had deemed at the time a suspect in the missing $16 billion. So again, another attempt or another effort, another step by the government to confirm that yes, money went missing. It was not the opposition that pointed fingers at these uh, uh, 15 suspects that the government had placed moratorium on at the time at the, and that they should not leave the country. At some point, uh, I think some officials at the ministry, I mean, at the central bank of Liberia, they have moratorium on them as well that they should not leave the country and travel. So at some point, uh, Charles Salif went and asked for the moratorium to be lifted. I think he wanted to travel. So I'm saying this to say that all these steps taken by our government at a time confirm reports that yes, some money in the tune of $16 billion went missing. So for Minister Twer to come up today to be telling us, the Liberian people, that it was the opposition that told a lie, Mr. Twer is out of now man enough to talk to Lin Eugene Namwe that he was wrong or that he was not man enough, I mean, he is not man enough to tell the justice minister that he was wrong to have placed moratorium on some individuals that he had deemed or he has deemed at the time as suspects. So that is how Samuel Twer is dead wrong. He was wrong. And he remained wrong today to say that it was the opposition that told a lie. I've maintained here, I'm not on the side of the opposition. I'm in the middle. I am in the middle. The opposition did not tell the Liberian people that $16 billion went missing. It was reported by the Hot Pepper newspaper and was confirmed by the government of Liberia through its Minister of Information, Lane Eugene Namwe, that yes, the amount of $15.5 billion was in question. And yes, the Justice Ministry came in and placed moratorium on about 15 suspects. And they even went and interrogated or they were investigating those individuals. At some point, the government reported that even those suspects were cooperating. And so for Minister 12 to come today and say uh, the opposition to apologize, He's not telling the truth and he's wrong. So if there is anybody who needs to apologize, it must be Len Eugene Namwe to apologize or the Liberian government to apologize to the Liberian people that they were wrong for confirming that $16 billion went missing. So Mr. Twer is wrong on that one. And I just wanted to make it clear. So let me progress here. So Twer, as you listen to the clip, went further by saying, I will write the speaker, the president pro tempore, and the press union of Liberia to demand, listen to that, Samuel Twer saying that he will write the speaker of the House of Representatives. He will write the president pro tempore and the press union of Liberia to demand that the opposition who did not report that 16 billion went missing should apologize to the Liberian people. I am just wondering here, folks, where is Samuel Twelve going with this? He will write the speaker and the pro tempore and the press union of Liberia for news that was reported by a newspaper and confirmed by the government itself, he's going to write the government through the speaker and the pro tempore to invite the opposition and demand that they apologize. Does it make sense to you folks? And Samuel 12 made a statement about two months ago now. What is stopping Samuel 12? from writing that letter. What is stopping Samuel Twer from writing this letter? In other words, 
Has Samuel 12 written the letter now? Can we ask Samuel 12? Has he written the letter now? Samuel 12 has not written the letter. And that's the reason why he has not written the letter. Because he has nothing. He has nothing to offer. So, but the other angle we can look at is that what is Samuel 12 taking Liberians for? Is Samuel 12 serious about writing the speaker? And if he writes the speaker and the speaker calls the uh, opposition, what is the speaker going to say to them? That we invited you here to apologize to the Liberian people? Because you lied that there was a $16 billion missing? So what is he going to get from that? So the, this is where trying to intimidate the opposition, trying to, 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 to make them to cower into submission at the first branch of government. Is that what we call democracy? That the first branch of government will call the entire opposition bloc in parliament to apologize to their people for something that they did not say that was reported and confirmed by the very government. Folks, are you following here? Are you following here, folks? Samuel 12 is asking that the opposition demand and that he will write the pro tem. And up to now, he has not written those letters because he's supposed to send one letter to the speaker, another letter to the pro tem, and another letter to the press union. All right, maybe the issue of the speaker and the pro tem, I don't know, it doesn't make sense to me at all. But if you come to think about it, why would he be writing the press union for now? At least the pro tem has a lot of power. At least the speaker has a lot of power. But what's about the press union? For the press union to demand the opposition to, to apologize? Folks, all this shows that Samuel 12 has nothing to offer the Liberian people as finance minister. And if you have been paying attention of late, you see that the final minister is more involved into politics than into fiscal issues in our country. The final minister is not willing to be final minister. It seems to be he has given up on being a finance minister. So at some point in the clip, Minister 12 went further by saying that because of that news, it has damaged the country's image to understand that whenever he went out to beg for money, on the line that word beg for money, he said whenever he went out to beg for money, the partners will be bringing this issue of 16 billion to his face. And he knows, he continued that the embarrassment that that news has caused him and the country. So let's ask a few questions here, folks. Is Samuel 12 economic policy to go around begging for money? Is that his economic policy? Folks, Samuel 12 is telling us about this $16 billion news, how it has been an embarrassment, how it has been like a storming block in his policy of begging 
for money. So this is Samuel 12 disclosing that his policy here is not to just go around and beg. After Samuel 12 and our current government introduced to us the proper agenda for prosperity and development. And uh, this policy is supposed to be able to take us out of the economic mess and woes that we, 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 we are engulfed with. So was that plan just something to just fool the Liberian people? And Mr. Samuel 12 policy here, when it comes to economics in our country, to just go around and beg for money? Now, if you listen to the clip at some point, Samuel 12 said, but later on, some of the partners told in that old Mr. 12, we know now, we heard about the report. It is now, it is not true, actually, that money went missing. So now we understand. So 12 is saying now, at some point, the partners got to know that it was a lie, that 16 billion dollars did not go missing. But then at the same time, he asking the Liberian people, to be apologized to by the opposition, even though the opposition, you know, uh, are not the one that broke the news. It's not the opposition that told the story about the 16 billion. The story was reported by a local newspaper, confirmed by our government. The government went and even uh, started arresting people, or being arrested people, actually. And some of them even went into jail for this 16 billion dollar. So the government did everything possible in his power to prove to Liberians, to convince to us Liberians and the whole world that yes, money went missing. So there was arrest, there was incarceration, there was investigation. So if Trey is saying that it was actually a lie that the opposition told, how come they arrested people? How come the poor people in prison how come people were charged? How come the government placed moratorium on individuals? How come the government were able to confirm that yes, the money was the money missing actually was not nine billion dollar, it was 15.5 billion dollar, which brought about this story of 16 billion dollars. So you see how Samuel Twer is wrong, folks. So Mr. Twer is wrong to say that the opposition should apologize. If anybody needs to apologize, it is the Liberian government that should apologize for confirming that 16 billion dollars went missing, for arresting people and incarcerating them, and even placing moratorium on some Liberians, and even inviting our international partners to conduct an investigation. It is the Liberian government that needs to apologize to the Liberian people and not the opposition. And there where Mr. Samuel Twer is dead wrong. Let me progress. Twer is not only wrong. Twer is dangerous for our country. Twer is now scapegoating. If you look at the economic indicators in our country, the inflation, the exchange rate, the prices, the conditions our people are in, or there's one budget short for after the other, since Mr. Twer took over as final minister, there has been one budget short for after the other. There has never been a budget in which Liberia has experienced zero budget share for never since Samuel 12 took over. And these are the achievements of Mr. Samuel 12. Terrible and westerning economic indicators in the country. So instead of Samuel 12 focusing on how to improve the economic indicators in the country, to turn the number around, to turn the numbers around in a positive direction, the numbers continue to take nose dive in the country. It's like Samuel Twer has tried everything he can as the finance minister to better the economy. It has not worked. So he has given up on the economy and has resorted into politics. 
This is what makes Mr. Samuel Twer dangerous for Liberia. Instead of focusing on fiscal issues in the country, trying to fix the economy, Mr. Twer is bent on propagating politics into the country. The idea of $16 billion that are not missing and opposition should apologize, he kept going. If Samuel Twer wants to be a politician, to be politicking every day, he can ask the president, that's his good friend, maybe the president can swap him with Nathaniel Mangel, or maybe they can make him party chairman, and then he can be seen on the campaign trail or everywhere in the community to talk about politics. When was the last time you saw Samuel Twer on any platform engaging economic issues from start to end? Never. He always pivoting to politics. That's what he does. And this is why that is dangerous on the part of Samuel Twer. Because the economy is westerning. The chief economy in the country is focusing on politics instead of the economy. One budget shortfall after the other doesn't concern Samuel Twer. He's tried everything he's failed, and so now he's coming to politics. So Mr. Samuel Twer now, as I speak to you, he is the chief campaigner in chief for the CDC in the primaries. He is so bent on making sure that Thomas Fala get elected as senator for Montserrado County. That is the only thing that worries Samuel Twer more than anything as we speak. As though the economy is not bad. If our economy was good enough, or if our economy were good enough, and then Samuel Twer is in every community campaigning for Thomas Fala, I will certainly cut in a slap. But when things are getting worse economically in the country over and over, and you have the finance minister, who primary responsibility and concern should be how to improve the economy for the lives of our people to get better is in every slum community trying to convince the people how to vote for a Thomas Fala to be senator. That tells me that that man has given on, on his responsibility. He has no interest in being finance minister whatsoever because he has tried everything and he has failed. And that is dangerous when you have a finance minister who has completely given up on his responsibility as a finance minister in the country. The indicators are clear that this brother has given up. He has no interest in talking about the economic issues because he knows the numbers, the indicators, the signs are not on his side. Everything about the economy Everything has slipped from out of the hands of Samuel Twer. And so the easy thing he can get to now is politics. Those are the low hanging fruits that he can get so that he can be able to satisfy his boss, the president. So Samuel Twer is in every community, folks. And he is campaigning. Samuel Twer is wrong on the issues and he is dangerous to our country, Liberia. And I want you to know that. Now, to tell you that Samuel Twer does not have interest in the job that he occupies, he does not care about the responsibility of a finance minister, he has failed and he's tried everything because everything not working, he's trying to pick the low hanging fruit to come to politics. Don't you see how Samuel Twer talks in every community where hands going here and there? Is that how you see a finance minister, somebody who should be an expert on financial and, uh, and fiscal policy issue, talk? Is that how somebody in that capacity, is that how the person talks? Samuel Twer speaks as though he stay on the LU campus talking student politics. He doesn't come across as an expert. His behavior, his style of communication discourages or, or individuals who are in this uh, or specified area of, of professionalism when it comes to policy issues and economics. The way he addresses issues, that alone turns people off. I know that to be a fact. So instead of Samuel Twelve focusing on the economy, what is Samuel Twelve doing? 
Samuel Twer is banned on politics. He has given off completely on his role as final minister because he has failed. He has tried every guessing politics, every guessing policy that he had ever thought of or failed. So he said to himself, you know what? I'm not going to force myself anymore. I've tried every uh, 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 policy that I can you know, think about. It didn't work. It can't work. All have failed. So let me just leave this economics and policy issue or uh, 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 fiscal issues alone. Let me jump into politics because that is easier. And so what is Samuel Twer doing, folks? Samuel Twer is buying people over to come and endorse the CDC candidate. That is what Samuel Twer has resorted to. So Samuel Twer went further by saying, I know the damage, the 16 billion issue has done to our country. And yet, Samuel Twer knowing that is using money to pay for endorsement. Samuel Twer bought uh, Mark Jabate over. I have the evidence. Samuel Twer bought Mark Jabate over to go and endorse uh, Thomas Fala. Samuel Twer also have been trying to buy Zhao Gibson, Noah Zhao Gibson of the United Party over. And many other folks, I mean, actually, they are a team of individuals, and Noah Zhao Gibson is the spokesman for that group that Samuel Twer is trying to buy over. Samuel Twer gave them 500,000 Liberian dollars and gave them X amount of United States dollars. This is the, 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 the responsibility of Samuel Twer. Does Samuel Twer actually understand the damage that the $16 billion news has done to Liberia? He does not really understand. If Samuel Twer understood that, he would be focusing on how to turn the economy around, how to improve the economic numbers. If he understood that, Samuel Twer will not be using thousands of dollars to buy opposition folks or folks that support the opposition to come to the CDC. A Samuel Twer knew that the news of missing $16 billion is damaging. If he knew or if he understands that that news is damaging, he will not be using money to buy opposition or folks that support the opposition to come to the CDC. Because by doing so, we further confirm that, yes, Money was taken by some individuals in the government. They have the money with them, and that is the money they are using right now to buy people over. If Samuel Twer only understood the damage of that report, he will not be engaging in the dangerous practice. He will not. For he does not have the slightest understanding of that. And yet he claims he does. And that is sad, and that is unfortunate on his part. That what makes Samuel Twer dangerous. To our country because he has abandoned his responsibility as a finance minister. Now he has engulfed himself with the useless politics of the day, using few dollars to buy individuals who, because times are tough in the country, might be able to agree to endorse the CDC candidate. As it happened in the case of Craymon City, as it happened in the case of Omar Jabate, and his attempt also on Noel Zhao Gibson and others. That is the new responsibility of Finance Minister Samuel Twer. Can Samuel Twer tell us whether or not the uh, one million people that who are going to get employment in the country through the PAPD? Can Samuel Twer give all the numbers? No, Samuel Twer does not have a number to tell us. Samuel Twer does not have any number to share with our in terms of employment. As stated in the PAPD. As though this is not enough for Samuel Twer. Samuel Twer is telling us that he wants us to make President Weir a benevolent dictator. Listen to that. Samuel Twer is asking us, the Liberian people, to agree with him. To make President we are a benevolent dictator. What does that tell you? It means that Samuel Twer has even given up on democracy. He has given up on democratic governance. 
a form of governance that have worked for many countries that we have been trying to nurture in Liberia that should be able to work in Liberia. Samuel Twer has given up on democratic governance because he has been a final minister in a democratic space, in a democratic society. And he has come to the realization that it has not been able to work for him. And so because Samuel Twer is out of options, Samuel Twer is asking us, Liberians, to make President Weir a benevolent dictator. Now, let me share with you who is a benevolent dictator. I will give a descriptive or a narrative definition in Liberian terms so that many of you will be able to relate to it. And I will give you examples like William V. S. Tottenham, President Tottenham that led Liberia for about 27 years. He was a benevolent dictator. He ruled the country for 27 years. Throughout, it was like there was no election. Tomon did what he pleased at the time. I repeat, Tomon did what he had pleased at the time he was in the presidency. No one dare question William V. S. Tomon at the time. And this is what Samuel Twer, who was on University of Liberia campus advocating for multi-party democracy, who claims to be a Democrat, is now telling us we should go back to the days of Todman. I mean, Todman. That is why he's telling us a benevolent dictator is someone who gets his way who decides what he wants to do and does it anyway, who has absolute control over the judiciary branch of government by pacifying that judiciary branch of government, by also pacifying the legislative branch of government and gets away on every issue. He goes about violating the laws, pacifying individuals who are supposed to hold him accountable, gets his way, and then that's it. He goes about doing things that will benefit the people, but he does it by violating the laws. He does it by stepping on the toes of others, by violating the rights, by violating statutes, by violating laws, all because that individual feels that a way you a desire resolved by the people. That is what Samuel Twer is asking us. Samuel Twer is wrong. Samuel Twer is dangerous to be asking Liberians for us to go back to the days of dictatorship, it is sad, it is unfortunate, and it is an embarrassment for Samuel Twer, who came across to many Liberians as a smart man, and this is all he has to offer. After running out of options on the economy, after failing to revive and resuscitate our economy, the only option Samuel Twer has is to tell us that President Weir should be turned into a benevolent dictator so that he does whatever he pleases and no one should question him and that is the solution. Then I got news for Samuel Twer. Charles Taylor was a benevolent dictator. He was brutal, but he was kind. I remember him giving money to people all over the place. Many of you remember Bernie Farsi, uh, uh, yeah, that, that lady from South Africa when she went to Liberia. Charles Taylor gave her money. I understand Charles Taylor have given her gold or diamonds, something like that. There's a Liberian sister who sang the song, uh, Liberia Will Rise Again. Liberia, sweet land of liberty. I think Charles Taylor gave that woman about 25,000 United States dollars. Charles Taylor was a benevolent dictator. How did that work for you, fellow Liberians? Liberia was on an embargo. Liberia suffered. Liberians suffered. And this is what Samuel Twer, who should know better, 
who has lived in the United States is asking us that our country should go back to the days of dictatorship. That is shameful. That is embarrassing. And this speaks to the fact that Samuel 12 <laughs> is out of options. He is definitely out of option when it comes to his responsibility as a finance minister in reviving the Liberian economy. And so what he's good at now is picking the low hanging fruits, picking the low hanging fruits over there. Before I continue, let me show you this image. Let me show you this image. You see the picture right there? There is Samuel Twa. There is our now former Minister of Foreign Affairs, Bersong Garfine. In the picture also, I see uh, our ambassador to the United States. Uh, I think his name is Mr. Patton. There you see them right there. I'm sure you have seen the picture, the image I was just showing right there. Samuel Twelve, Foreign Minister, former now, Boston Garfine, and then Liberia's Ambassador to the United States, uh, Mr. Patton. They were at the, uh, I think the headquarters of the African Union, they where they took that picture. The AU headquarters, I think it's in, uh, Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. There they took that picture. Why am I showing you this image? It is sad again to report to you that on Samuel Twer's leadership as final minister, Liberia is not able to meet its obligation to the African Union. And this is the Samuel Twer that is asking us to make president, we are a benevolent dictator. So, making president, we are a benevolent dictator, is that Samuel Twelve economic policy now, folks? <laughs> Samuel Twelve has given up, folks. He is out of option. He is out of option. So, Liberia, honor Samuel Twelve has failed to meet its obligation to the African Union, the AU. Liberia owes the African Union $1.6 million. And because Liberia has failed, Liberia now is being made an observer at the African Union. Liberia has lost her membership. And you know Liberia has been a founding member of the AU. In Liberian term, we can say now Liberia is a floor member. Liberia is just an observer. Liberia has been holding membership to this ballet since 1963. But under the leadership of Samuel Twelve. And President, we are that he's asking us to make a benevolent dictator. Liberia has lost membership with the African Union. That is not only a regional disgrace, it is also an international disgrace for Liberia. All our friends in the region have their membership because they have been able to meet up with their obligation. But our country, under the leadership of Samuel Twer and under the leadership of the prospective benevolent dictator, President Weah, Liberia has lost its funding membership. All Liberia has lost its membership at the African Union. Liberia is now a mere observer. In Liberia, we say Liberia is a floor member. So, folks, you see where we are. 
Samuel 12 is a complete contradiction to everything that he and the CDC and this government have articulated in their proper agenda. Remember in their proper agenda, one of the pillars is power to the people? Instead of Samuel 12 focusing on empowering the Liberian people economically through like the liberalization policy, things like that, they're not doing it. He's asking us to be president. We are a Berlin voting dictator. That is a serious contradiction. In your PAPD, you said that Liberia will be, Liberians will be in power. And you describe it as a power to the people. You are not doing that. Or you try to do that, you feel you are out of options. And so now you are coming to us and telling us that we should make president. We are a benevolent dictator. As though just making president, we are a dictator, will solve all the problems that we have today. Mr. Twer is not only wrong. Mr. Twer is not only wrong. It is just sad. It is just unfortunate. And Mr. Twer is dangerous for Liberia. And I want you Liberians to know that. Their brother has given up on his responsibility to serve our country as the finance minister to improve our economy, revive our economy, make sure that the one million people to the promise uh, to gain employment in the country, you know, or uh, get that employment that they talk about in their PAPD instead of empowering Liberians. As they say in their PAPD on on the pillow that said power to the people, Mr. Twer, because he knows that he has failed, they have failed, and the only thing they can do now is the main president. We are a benevolent dictator so that they can just wake up in the morning and say, let the devour rest, and then the devour rest and make the Liberian people to clap for them because they're only operating on morale now. Folks, I have made my case that Mr. Samuel Twer is dead wrong for saying that the opposition should apologize to the Liberian people and that Mr. Twer is also dangerous for calling on us Liberians to help him make President We are a benevolent dictator. All these are all tactics to distract our attention from his failures, the challenges that the country facing, and their inability to be able to improve the country and improve the life of our people. These are all diversionary tactics being deployed or being applied here by Samuel Twer, and Liberians should not buy it. If Mr. Twer is aware, now that he's convinced that he has still and he has given up, the best he can do is to ask uh, President Weah that he's resigning. Then President Weah can find somebody to replace him. Or if Twer, in as much as he does not have interest in improving the economy because he knows that he has no options or he has, you know, or he's out of options, let him just ask President Weah to put him into a position where he will be able to talk politics every day. Because from all indication, Mr. Twer, does not have it in him to redeem the library economy. And folks, I have made my case. I want you to start calling right now. I am about to open the phone line so that you can participate. I am about to open the phone line so you can participate. It is your time to speak or forever hold your peace. The phone number is on the screen right there. Get your calls coming in, folks. Uh, the program you have been watching is the Hour of Politics. And I am your host, Anthony C. Yeah, I focus on Liberia. Minister Samuel Twer is dead wrong on the issues. He is dangerous for our country to be calling that uh, Liberians should turn President Weir to a benevolent dictator. It's not only unfortunate, it's sad. And Mr. Twer is trying to take us to the days of Todman. He's trying to take us to the days of Charles Taylor. Those individuals were burning violent dictators. Liberia did not benefit 
And it is sad that Samuel 12 will be taking us to that dangerous and unfortunate past. We can't do that. Doing so will mean that Samuel 12, doing so will mean that we Liberians are trying to buy the, the writing potatoes and the writing oranges Samuel 12 is trying to sell to us. And I'm saying to you Liberians, we should not buy that. The phone lines are open and uh, you can place in your call as quickly as possible so that I can take a few calls quickly. I want to hear you to speak on the issue as well. If you disagree with me, come and make your case. And you know, if you have a question, if you have your comments, come and have your say. This is what we do here at Focus on Liberia. We give you the platform to not only be able to listen, but also to be able to make your contribution. Let me read a few comments as I wait for individuals to call. And after reading some, uh, reading some comments, I can start taking your calls. Let me read this one. Oh, that one is gone. I wanted to read it. This one is from this one is from Eugenia Mensa. Then why the opposition refused to accept the crawl report? The opposition just wanted to use the issue as a propaganda machine. Uh, you miss it. The opposition did not report it. Uh, the newspaper reported it and the government confirmed it. So you can't blame that on the opposition. That is politics. Steve Bully writes, the argument here is both horses need to investigate Samuel Twell, Sir Joseph, and Thomas Fowler for distributing money illegally and paying off people as part of their campaign plans when the net has, has not authorized them to campaign. Steve Bully is making his case there. Mr. Bully continues, Mr. Twell is a foolish and tricky man who does not know what he is doing. He is dangerous and risky for the country. Steve Bowley agree with me there that Samuel Twer is dangerous. Uh, Emre Nicole responding to Eugene Mensa, the crowd is damaging for the government. It was just a it was just a scoping report. Uh, Nicole there is responding uh, to the comment that I read earlier. Uh, Steve Bode again, don't blame Samuel Twell and other crows. I blame the opposition. They should be pressing these crooks and hold them accountable, but they are here bouncing and fighting. Steve Bode, I couldn't agree with you. That's why the opposition got fired yesterday. I fired them yesterday, and uh, they need to get their house in order because the opposition, just like the government, I want to say, the opposition is so terrible. This opposition is even worse. That's what I said yesterday in my topic. The opposition is worse. The government is terrible. Get your calls coming. I will soon start taking those calls. I had a call here, but that caller dropped off. It seems to be the caller does not want to pay money. Caller, let me remind you that we spend money to go live. You have to be able to spend money to be part of this conversation. So, folks, Samuel Twell is dangerous for our country and i have no regret for saying that because he has demonstrated that over and over our people are hungrier now than ever before let me read you some statistics to prove to you that instead of samuel 12 looking at these statistics these reports and trying to do something about it samuel 12 is banned on campaigning and buying buying individuals to come and endorse somebody so that that person can become senator. As though when Thomas Fala becomes senator, Liberia problem will be over. That one is dangerous. Instead of facing the real issues, trying to tackle the problems, he is picking the low hanging fruit because he's out of options. Let me read something here for you. Liberia is the four poorest country in the world today. Liberia is the if unhappiest and most miserable country in the world, according to the UNDP. Liberia is the eighth hungriest nation, according to Concern International. About 230,000 Liberian children are suffering from chronic malnutrition, according to UNICEF. Liberia ranks number one among 10 worst countries for business in Africa. These are the hardcore truths that Samuel Twell, as a final minister, should be focusing on instead of telling Liberians 
to come and make president we are a benevolent dictator. It is not only sad, it is just unfortunate, and Mr. Samuel Twer is there wrong on the issue. The failure of the, 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 the government to, to meet its obligation to the African Union is an international and regional disgrace to our country, and this happened on Samuel Twer and the prospective benevolent dictator that he's trying to introduce to us. And we Liberians should not buy that. Samuel Twer only economic policy now is to be begging for money because that's why he said to us that anytime he goes to beg for money, this 16 billion dollar news, you know, can be embarrassing him. You know, so Samuel Twer need to get it right. Our country is in deep trouble. We need leadership. We don't need people to job it. You, you, you give him money to Chris Monsilla, you give him money to uh, 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 Man Jabate, you give him money to Noel Zao Gessin. How does that help the country economically? How does that help the suffering people of Liberia? How? So the brother is dangerous for our country. Let me bring in the man, uh, Joe Moyu here quickly. Joe Moyu. Let me try to bring Joe Moyu in. Let me try to bring Joe Moyu in. Let me try to bring Joe Moyu in here. All right. Joe, can you hear me? Let me see here. Hello there, Joe. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you clearly. All right, Joe. Welcome, 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 uh, my man. Uh, it is time for you to speak off or have a hold your peace. What's your take? <laughs> I agree with you, but you know, in a way, you can't, you cannot blame uh, uh, Samuel Twer mm -hmm. because first thing, he doesn't have the domain expertise to be the finance minister okay. of a post-conflict nation. The job mm -hmm. is too big for him. Okay, it's too big for him. So, like you said, part of what you said, it seems like he gave up, yep. and he's now delving into politics and moving away. From you know talking about how uh, you know about economic recovery and all that and steps put in place to ensure that uh, the country rebound, especially you know during uh, COVID nineteen. So yeah, he doesn't have the expertise, no domain expertise in that area. He was given it was uh, a pure political play mm -hmm. that got him the job. So yeah, I agree with you a hundred percent. He has given up. Joe Moyo, you know, uh, so what you make of hey, this is a recent, you know, statement that we should make president. We are a benevolent president. <laughs> What's your take on that? Yeah, I mean, that is just so crazy. I don't know. Maybe he had a few, uh, few drinks before, before saying that, <laughs> because that, that makes no sense to be a benevolent benevolent dictator there's some things you have to know you have to know statecraft and all that and those are areas that that we are is lacking in i mean when last you, you ever heard we are make an announcement to his people dictators benevolent dictators they talk to their people on a yeah. weekly basis right you know it may be nonsense but at least they engage the population that's what ben benevolent dictators do right are you barely here from we are so no, he doesn't even qualify to be a benevolent dictator. Statecraft, communications, those are all part, part and parcel of what uh, benevol benevolent dictators are known for. Right. During that my time, I, I, you know, those who are living during that time, they would tell you, say yes, he used to communicate with his people all the time. He he knew statecraft. Mm -hmm. You know, he knew his people. But I don't think uh, uh, we are, you know, you and I know how he got there anyway. So, yeah, That's there's true. no way to, to reinvent that wheel. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you, Joe. Thank you so very much for your participation here. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Joe, are you there agreeing with me that uh, Samuel Twer is there wrong on the issue uh, and that uh, he's dangerous to our country? He's wrong to say that... Uh, the opposition lie. It was not the opposition that told the story about 16 billion. It was the government that confirmed that 16 billion data was missing uh, through the Minister of Information, Len Eugene Nambe.
he agrees with me that uh, Samuel Twer is also wrong to be calling on Liberians to make President We are a benevolent dictator. You know, uh, what, what, what dictatorship has done for Liberia anyway? What has dictatorship done for Liberia anyway? We all know dictatorship is not good for any country because dictators can go as far as killing individuals, violating people's rights, violating laws. Is Samuel Twer trying to suggest to us that Liberia must be turned into a lawless country? Does he really understand why he's asking us for it yet? Samuel Twer, if you have given up, on your role and responsibility as a finance minister, if you have given up on your own government, it is simple. Mr. Twer, resign. These statements that you are making are just unfortunate and out of place completely. If you don't have anything to offer, ask President we had a look. I need to leave, find somebody else to do this job. This job is just tough for me. That dictatorship will solve the economic problems our people are facing. Prices are out of control. Inflation, exchange rate, nothing is pointing in the, uh, the right direction. And he can't talk about making president, we are a benevolent dictator, buying people here and there to come and endorse CDC candidate, as though when Thomas Fala is elected, the noise, the case was made to the people of Monserrado County to elect Sir Joseph. Sir Joseph got elected. Since Sir Joseph got elected, Things has gotten worse into the country. So what makes you to think that by electing Thomas Farah will be the silver bullet? Eh? CDC did everything to help elect uh, Abu Kili, Abu Kamara, in district uh, number 15. Since Abu got elected, we have not heard from Abu on any national issue. The economic condition of our people continue to deteriorate. Samuel Twer, as foreign minister, instead of focusing on fiscal policy, he is telling us that we are president. We are a benevolent dictator. How does that solve our problem? This man is out of options. He has nothing to offer the Liberian people, and so, folks, he is dangerous for Liberia. And let me explain to you what I mean by dangerous because some people might be saying, oh, what you mean by the man is dangerous. Do you know what it means if you are a father and your responsibility for your family is to go out and find a job and find food for your family and you have given up on providing for your family? Do you not understand that that is dangerous to your family? The bills will not be paid. Your family can't eat. You might end up losing your home. You might not be able to pay your rent or you might not be able to pay your mortgage. Your family will go homeless. Don't you think that is dangerous to your family health and safety? This is what Samuel Twer is doing. Liberia cannot pay its $1.6 million it owes the African Union. Today, Liberia has lost its membership with the African Union. Liberia is now a mere observer like a floor member. That did not happen to Sierra Leone. That did not happen to Africans. That did not happen to Guinea. Our neighbors. It has happened to us. Don't you see the danger here? If only we had a president who can read between the lines, he's supposed to fire the terminal 12 in a long time. But the president is relying on Samuel Twer. Samuel Twer is the smartest man that our government has. This is why you see things are just getting worse and worse and worse. The Samuel Twer man that we're depending on, <laughs> he has given up. He left the responsibilities now of a final minister. He came to politics. Buying people to vote for to endorse uh, Thomas Fala. That's the work of the finance minister. Liberia can pay 1.6 million. This is the very Samuel Twer that told us that we have a surplus budget. You have surplus budget, and then you can't pay 1.6 million dollar to the African Union. You can't pay Liberia dues. You can't pay it. 
And you say we had surplus? So I show you the image. He was with President Weah. Or uh, what's his name? Besson Gaffine, who was Minister of Foreign Affairs too, because he just resigned like three, three weeks or maybe a month ago now. He just resigned. Where was he? They couldn't pay that? Well, folks, I have to end it there here. I have to end it there. I have to end it there here quickly, folks. Uh, let me give my closing comment and leave. Samyon Twer is wrong. Samyon Twer is dangerous for Liberia. I have made my case, and I believe many people agree with me. And so I'm asking President Wea if he wants Liberia to succeed on his administration economically, he needs to find a new finance minister <laughs> because the one he has has given up on his responsibility. Yep, that one has given up on his responsibility. Uh, let me read a few comments yet. Uh, Franklin Mangobre, right? FOL, Abu Kamara never never win. I think he meant to say never won the representative election. Ne wreck and cheated Telia Yuri in the election. My brother, that one is your opinion. Uh, according to the results, and uh, Abu won, and so Abu is represented today. So if you have any other results, I'm not disagreeing with you, but I'm telling you the record said Abu won. That's why Abu is represented today. If Telia had won, Telia will be represented today. Uh, Philip Bala right? Mr. C.A., sooner or later, you will be telling us uh, how Liberia is now a spectator to Equus instead of a team player. Uh, that's your comment there. I don't know what you're trying to say. Uh, Budu Due, Samuel 12 only went to school to learn terminologies instead of economics. Yeah, he is good at words. He plays with words. Uh, Emmanuel Ayepon, sorry, I'm butchering your name here. Let Bakubu spell Belenvolen. Well, Bakubu spelling Belenvolen is not an issue. Even if Bakubu can spell Belenvolen, how does that help our country, my brother? Anyway, folks, in cyberspace, I want to sincerely thank you for following the broadcast here. Yeah, I focus on Liberia. Yeah, I focus on Liberia. We educate, we elevate, and promote all things Liberia. We brought to you the topic. Samuel Twer is dead wrong for saying the opposition should apologize to the Liberian people for the missing $16 billion. And we also said to you Samuel Twer's statement that uh, Liberia should be, or uh, our uh, president, we are should be made a benevolent dictator is also dangerous for our country because we have seen this before. Charles Taylor was a benevolent dictator from my understanding. Todman was a benevolent dictator from my understanding. And Liberia did not go anywhere. We've tried that before or we have seen that before. It did not help us. It will not help us now. All right? So, folks, on that note, this is how we will come to the end of this edition of Focus on Liberia. For any ballet I may have disappointed on this issue and intellectually, I will do better. But if your disagreement is with me on the issue, I respect your disagreement. But I maintain my position on this issue that Samuel Twer is not only dead wrong on the issues, but Samuel Twer is also dangerous for our country. On that note, folks, I want to say thank you for following our broadcast here at Focus on Liberia. Folks, please like our Facebook page. You need to like the page so that you can get the notification. And you also need to subscribe to our YouTube channel. On that note, folks, I'm answering this here saying to you, bye-bye. We all love you,
We all are the Yeah.